Well, howdy y'all. Welcome back to The Social Regressive in part six in our series. Our six millimeter arc carbine is just about ready for the range, but obviously we're missing something. Before we can mount and level the scope, we're gonna need to find the right eye relief. Before we find the right eye relief, we need to make sure we have the right length of pull. So do this with me. Take your carbine or your rifle, and I want you to get your upper arm level with the ground as much as possible, and I want you to get a 90 degree angle going with your forearm. If the butt pad is touching the meat of your arm, and that means that you, you have it properly set up. If it's not touching, you're gonna need to extend it. If it is you know, kind of pushing too much and you're ending up up here, then that means you need to shorten it up a bit. Now you can tweak this as you go along. If something doesn't feel right out in the field, you can mess with it some. But for me, all of my rifles, all of my carbines, I like to set up with a 14 and a half inch length of pull. And now that I know that, I can just bust out a tape measure every time in order to get this right. So if my finger is resting on the trigger, this should feel really comfortable for me. Once you have that right length of pull, you can find your right eye relief. So what we're gonna do now is attach the scope mount or rings to the top. What I'm working with is the Athlon AR Tactical. There are two different ones. Uh, the normal Athlon Precision, this one is made in the USA. And then there's one called the Armor Line, and that's gonna be made in China, and it's gonna be about half the price. So you're looking at a bit over 100 bucks for this, and then I think about 60 bucks uh, for the Chinese made one. This is a 20 MOA model. I wanna be able to get a little bit of extra drop out in the field since I can actually make contact uh, with some farther targets with this. And I should have plenty of adjustment on the scope. Uh, this is the Athlon Helos BTR Gen 2, two to 12 by 42 mil illuminated reticle rifle scope. One of the longest titles I've ever seen on a scope. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be just ridiculously good. It has a whole lot of really good things going on and we're gonna explore that a little bit later on. On. But yeah, the first thing we need to do is get this mount on right. This American-made Athlon mount has a really high quality feel to it. It feels a lot like the Warren mount. And I'm just gonna find a, a realistic position for it here on the rail. Um, what I'm gonna do is leave a little bit of room for iron sights because I may come back at a later time and slot those in there. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of room forward of that first cutout section. And that's usually gonna be just perfect for a good set of irons like the uh, the, uh, the Ultradyne C2s or something. So that should be just about right. I wanna cheat this forward just a tiny little bit. So do this with all your rings and mounts, kind of push them forward a bit because remember that as the rifle recoils, it's gonna move under the mount and eventually it's gonna end up uh, pushing this scope relatively forward anyway. So I'll just get this hand tight to begin with. And just to make sure that everything is kind of flush and level, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down to torque. This takes 65 pound inches or inch pounds uh, to tighten this down, and I'm using the Weaver Torque Wrench. This is something that I showed in one of the previous videos, and I highly recommend you pick up one of these. They're very flexible. There's also a worn tool that you can get that's really easy to use out in the field. It's a quick torque wrench that actually beeps at you and clicks over when it hits that 65 pound inches. But if you have one of these, you can kind of do anything. Go ahead and take the top straps off the rings. We're gonna remove these and get the scope loosely in place so we can find the right eye relief. Time to get the scope. This is all the unboxing you're gonna get. <laughs> now the scope comes with a couple accessories. You get a, a the usual um, uh, Glenn's cleaning cloth and a desiccant packet. <laughs> yeah, there it is again. That's the, uh, the two to 12 by 42. And this should be a really, really flexible range for what we're about to get up to. So what I really need to check right now is to see if my mount is in the right place so that I can get, I want the, uh, the, the ocular bell probably to be, it usually ends up right about at the back of the charging handle here. So it looks like I may need to move the mount forward. Uh, let's go ahead and test this. Now remember that I don't have the, uh, the scope actually clamped down. It is not safe right now. 
I want to make sure that I don't dump this. Uh, now, as I'm finding my eye relief, I need to make sure that I'm in a realistic position, the position that I'm most likely to use out in the field. So if I think I'm going to be going prone, I need to get down on the floor right now, get a bipod, get a bag, and then use that to figure out what uh, position I need to be in here. So I'm mostly going to be firing offhand. I'm going to be standing, I'm going to be leaning in, and probably another way to think about this is what is your most critical shot going to be? What's going to be the most important? I will be firing this in the prone, but I think the most dangerous uh, you know, part of my whole scenario is when a hog is running straight at me. Hopefully that won't happen. But uh, if it does, I want to make sure that if I'm really leaning into a shot, and I see that I have to adjust the, uh, the comb and bring it down so I can see through the scope first. But uh, yeah, once I get everything situated, I should be able to just look straight through the scope and I should be able to do it at uh, both low magnification and high. And I'm gonna try to find the right position, moving this forward and backward until I get exactly where it's supposed to be. After a little experimenting, both at high magnification and at low magnification, I've found that the scope needs to be exactly here. So it's about halfway into the castle nut back there. That's about how far it needs to be. And that's at both yeah, high magnification and low magnification. I need the cheek riser on the PRS light as low as it can go. Maybe I can take it up one notch, but that's about it. And that feels really comfortable to me as I'm really leaning in for kind of a hasty shot. The mount, you can see that I moved it forward just one extra notch, and this is going to be just about perfect. I want to try to get uh, these positions kind of centered on these, uh, the tube of the scope. I don't want to be really near one of the bells or near the middle, uh, because sometimes those can flare just a little bit. I don't want to crush anything, so that should be perfect. Now we need to level this. I have the rifle chucked up in a vise, but let's make sure that it's level. I'm just going to take this simple spirit level, pop it onto the rail, all right, that's looking good. So now we have level with the rifle. And back here you can see a target that I've set up. And I have this level as well. Uh, this, I've just use a simple plumb bob. You can use a spirit level, whatever you need, in order to get these cross hatches set up right. You can just use a piece of graph paper too if you don't have a target sitting around. So now I'm going to dim the lights. I've taken a flashlight and I've covered the end in aluminum foil and punched just a small hole in the end. This is going to make it more like a pin light. And as I shine it through, I'm going to be able to project the reticle onto my target at the back there. Now it may not line up perfectly, but that's not important. All I need to see is if this is level. So I can actually spin the scope and see how it levels up. Oh, that is just beautiful. So that is my level. And that's just how quick and easy that this can be. Now I'm gonna shine my light around just to make sure, cause we can get some distortion effects as we uh, put the light in different spots. The more that I shine straight through the middle though, if that alignment looks good, then I am ready to go. Making sure that I don't move or spin the scope in any way, I need to reinstall these top straps. And these are gonna come down to 25 inch pounds or pound inches of torque. I'm going to use a simple ratcheting screwdriver with a Torx bit at first, just to get these all down to the same depth. I need to make sure that I spin these all the same number of times so that I'm not putting weird torque on this. Uh, like maybe I have one side that has a large gap and then another side that is really crushed down on the other side. I wanna make sure that this is even. So first I'm gonna find where the screw kinda of clicks over and starts. Okay, I felt that. And now I'm gonna spin this. We'll start off with five turns. I think I can take it to six. Yeah, there we go. With just these front two, I'm gonna start squeaking this down just a little bit by half turns until I start to get near the point where it's catching. And there it is. It looks like I can get about eight and a half turns before it starts to catch. So I'm going to get all of these, both on this strap and on the back strap, uh, down to where it's nearly touching, and then I can torque from there. 
One dumb thing that I've recommended in the past is putting blue Loctite on these screws. Don't do that. That's a terrible idea. It's going to mess up your torque later if you want to be able to take the scope off, put it back on. Maybe you need to fix your eye relief at some point and get it tweaked again. Yeah, it's going to mess up your torque and it's going to make things not work right. You could end up accidentally crushing your scope or ending up not having enough torque to really hold the uh, scope in place. So instead, just use proper torque. This is a 25 inch pound set. So I think that this has some steel sleeves running through here. So I'm going to use this tool. I could use that Weaver torque wrench to set this to 25, but I'm going to use this this time. This is kind of a, a click type torque wrench. So I'm going to slowly bring each side down using the star pattern to make sure that I get proper torque all the way around. I don't want any hot spots. I don't want one part really low and other parts really high. So I need to do this equally and I'm doing it by feel. Okay, there's my first click. Second click. Third click. Fourth click. And now we'll do one more pass. That should be perfect. Everything on the mount is tight, but don't be proud. Before you leave the garage, make sure that everything is correct. If not, fix it now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the scope, I'm gonna set it on its lowest magnification down to 2X, and man, is that smooth. This is gonna be so easy to run out in the field. FFP is one where I definitely find myself dialing on the magnification a lot in order to get the right view, since I don't have to worry about changing any values for drop or windage in the reticle. I can just you know, go ahead and crank around on this. I don't even have to look to see what magnification is. As long as it is correct for my scenario, I'm just gonna use it. So I'm gonna crank this down to 2X, find a bright spot out here, and actually what I'm going to do is close my eyes. I should have mentioned this earlier uh, when you're finding your eye relief. Get into a nice strong position, close your eyes, get your face down into the stock, and when you open them you should be looking straight through the scope and am I ever. This looks great. I took the comb up just one notch on the PRS light. I took it up just one and this is getting me the exact right position. So if I need to really quickly get on a dangerous animal, yeah, this is the exact right spot. And remember that your eye relief is going to change with magnification. Your 2X a lot of times is gonna be a little bit farther away than say your 12X. You might have to actually have your face a little bit closer. So let's see, if I get the, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. This is gonna be perfect out in the field. So I'm really happy with how this came out. Everything is torqued to spec. We're good to go. Thanks a lot, you guys, for watching this video. If you have any questions about the process, please put them in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions for ways that we can do things differently, please put those in the comments as well. And remember that the purpose for this, the reason why we are leveling this so precisely, is so that we can make a very precise hit at a longer distance. If I want to be able to hit a coyote at 1,000 yards, the rifle should be up to it, the cartridge should be up to it, as long as my ammo is up to it, the only thing that might hold me back is me and the scope. So if this is level, I'm going to be able to make my adjustments on the turret or use the reticle and be able to make that precise hit. So yeah, thanks for watching you guys. Thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts that have made this possible. I will see you all around. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.